This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hello there. Welcome to episode 162 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. Thank you so much for being here. I am excited about today's interview for a couple of reasons. Number one, I get to have Megan Gillikin from A Southern Soiree and the Weddings for Real podcast back on the show. She was here last summer in June 2019, and it was an absolute pleasure to have her on the show. It's been a really popular episode, so I know you're going to enjoy hearing about our professional development and education experiences in the industry, what it was like when we both first joined the industry. It was different times. She's, of course, been in this specific industry for over 10 years, and I've been in for about five years now as a wedding venue owner. And we're also going to talk about what it's like now. What do we look for when it comes to professional development? What are we trying to learn now that we are this far in business? Uh, What education looks like? You know, what what do live events look like? What do courses look like? What do we want? out of our education. And the reason we're talking about this is because Megan has been really hard at work developing her membership site for wedding planners only who've been in business for zero to five years. And the membership site is called the Planners Vault. Talk about knowing exactly who your ideal client is, right? Wedding planners only in business zero to five years. That is who Megan is helping with the Planners Vault. I was so impressed when she talked to me about the Planners Vault for the first time many months ago, told me what she was doing. And when she gave me her ideal client, I said, this is incredible because you know if this is for you. You'll know. When you hear Megan talk about this in the episode, if you're a wedding planner zero to five years in business, or maybe you're over five years, but you haven't been taking it seriously and you want to be in that zero to five year range of actually hitting it hard and growing it hard, then this planner's vault is for you. But the cool thing is, is you're going to know. You're going to know if she's talking to you at the end of this episode when she talks to us about the Planner's Vault. Listen, I want to just fully disclose, I am an affiliate partner with Megan. I'm more than an affiliate partner. I'm actually part of the Planner's Vault. I am a professional partner within the membership. And at least six times a year, I will be in there teaching you new marketing strategies, new sales strategies, how to market your business, how to bring more leads into your business. I'm so excited for that. And I will also be providing a She Creates content calendar. Yes, that She Creates content calendar. It's $197 by itself. But if you join the Planner's Vault at the annual level, you're going to get the She Creates content calendar along with a whole host of other bonuses for free. It's pretty incredible. I'm so excited to be able to offer that because I know that it works. I know that if you create a content plan, if you incorporate video, if you incorporate repurposing, that that is one of the easiest and quickest ways to get started with marketing. So uh, when Megan asked me if there was something I wanted to provide as a partner of the Planner's Vault, I said absolutely. And I gave the She Creates content calendar. So that is for those of you who join the Planner's Vault at an annual level. The Planner's Vault is a membership. There are multiple ways to join. You can do monthly. You can do yearly. I definitely recommend annual. It's going to be your very best value. What's inside the Planner's Vault? We talk about this at the end of the episode, but I want to give you a little sneak peek. Videos, trainings, live webinars, resources, documents, community, accountability, all of those things that we really need when we are zero to five years in business, when we don't know what our contract should say, when we don't know where to go to find a contract because we're adding a service, where we, when we don't know where to go because we know that marketing is important, but we don't know exactly what to do. We need a strategy. We need tactics. We need to get our hands in. I don't want someone else just to tell me to post to Instagram. That's not a strategy and so much more. That's what's inside the Planner's Vault. I would love for you guys to join us on Megan's live webinar Thursday, February 27th, 2020. If you are listening to this live, if it's not live, still go to this link because you can absolutely still sign up. But if you're listening to this in real time, head over to theplannersvault.com forward slash she creates business, theplannersvault.com forward slash she creates business. Sign up for the webinar. I'll be on it too. I'm not going to be hosting it, but I will just be a guest as well, like in the comments, hanging out with you. I'll be an attendee watching my girl crush it and talk to you more about the Planners Vault. But I would love to have you guys join us. 
business. Again, that link is theplannersvault.com forward slash she creates business. Listen, if you're a wedding planner, zero to five years in business, and you have been looking for a place with community, accountability, but actually tactical and uh, strategic resources that you can take from the membership and implement into your business, which I think is really rare, this is for you. I'm so proud to be a partner of this. Let me tell you a little bit more about Megan. If you heard her interview back in the summer of 2019, you know a little bit about her, but she is a successful wedding and event planning business owner at a Southern Soiree. She's a consultant to fellow industry workers, a podcaster, and a mom to three girls under seven. Her two favorite meals are breakfast and dessert, my girl. And she loves dance parties in the living room with her husband and those three daughters. Megan graduated with her hospitality degree and her MBA. After graduation, she earned her stripes in the hotel industry by working for Marriott for almost five years on the event operations and planning side in roles that led her to love events. In 2010, Megan left the hotel world and took over ownership of an existing wedding planning company in need of rebranding to remain relevant within the industry. After nine years of growing a Southern Soiree, Megan has established it as one of the most sought after, highly regarded event planning companies in the southeastern United States. She loves getting to know the inner workings of people's personalities, so much so that she started a wedding industry podcast called Weddings for Real in 2018. That led to another passion, which is consulting with other vendors and growing their business purposely. Megan has a love for providing real, insightful, and tangible advice and wisdom on growing and sustaining a successful event business. If you're a Myers-Briggs fan, she's an ENFJ and a solid three on the Enneagram, which I love that we get along because I'm a solid eight. Uh, She's ambitious, adaptable, and enthusiastic, and her love for this industry is contagious. I can attest to that. Really looking forward to you guys listening to this interview. I'm so excited for planners to have the Planners Vault. Don't forget, go over to theplannersvault.com forward slash she creates business. The link will be in the show notes. DM me on Instagram as always if you can't find anything. Let's go to the show with Megan Gillikin from A Southern Soiree. Let's talk about professional development and continuing education in the wedding industry. Megan, welcome back to the show. Kinsey, I'm so excited to be back. I'm so, so honored and just excited to have you back. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Last time you were on, we talked about some mistakes you see wedding professionals making. And that's been one of my most popular episodes, which is wonderful. Oh, I love to hear that. Yes. And now today, we are going to talk about education and professional development in the industry, which, you know, I am obsessed with learning new things. So I'm excited about this. And we both have a lot of thoughts on this. (laughs) I know. And we also come from like different backgrounds and time that we've spent in the industry. So I'm really pumped about this topic, too. Yeah, I am too. You guys, if you have not heard Megan's first interview on the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the show notes. It is a great one. Go ahead and take a listen to that. These are not sequential. So stay here with us and then, you know, go back because I know you're going to love Megan. You're going to want to hear everything that she has to say. We did a more of a bio situation for Megan in that first episode. So we're just going to dive right into today's topic. But uh, if you want to learn more about Megan, head to that first episode. You know, I read her professional bio there at the top of the show of this episode. And she you can also find her at Weddings for Real, which is the another amazing podcast in, in our industry. And uh, she'll give us all of her details at the end of this episode. So we're not going to do that normal, like tell me who you are and what you're doing in the wedding industry. She's a wedding planner. You know that for 10 years, professional bio. Let's talk about professional development. Let's do it. Um, you've been in the industry for a decade, almost over a decade now. <laughs> wow, that sounds that sounds older than I feel. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds older than you look. You're looking fresh, girl. <laughs> Like, oh, thanks, lady. Amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good Instagram yeah. filter. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have this great big smile. It just makes me happy every time you post a picture of oh, yourself. Oh, you're sweet. You're sweet. Yeah. You need but to yeah, more. Like 10 years, 10 years. 10 it's years gone by time. fast and slow all at the same time, if that makes any sense. That does make a lot of sense. Did you have any kids when you first started? I didn't. I say okay. that a Southern Three was my very first baby and... um was born, I guess I adopted a Southern Tory back in 2010. I was not the original owner of the business. So that's a fun fact that not a lot of people know. That's true. And I was telling you, I didn't even know that. And I feel like I should know that about you. What tell us and we didn't we didn't cover that. So tell us a little bit about what that was like for you purchasing a business from somebody else. 
Yeah. So I was, at the time, I had been working for Marriott for about five years as a venue coordinator, um, booking weddings, detailing weddings, working with clients. So I had my toes in the wedding industry. I got married myself back in 2010, and um, I reached out to a local planner after the wedding. I was kind of just ready. You know, when you get that urge, you're like, it's time for the next step in my career. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to a local planner that I had not worked with um, I knew of her business, but I didn't know her. And I reached out about potential opportunities. We met for what I thought was a job interview. I had like a resume, cover letter, client references. And um, she came into the little Starbucks where we were meeting. Windblown sat down next to me and said, um, I am burned out. I am looking for someone to take over my business. I have four weddings on the books for... Um, later on this year and one in uh, next year. And I'm moving to DC in a couple months and I need for someone to take over that business. <laughs> and um, so it was kind of an interesting twist in where I thought things were going. I went home to my husband, Jason, who we had been married literally, I think it, it was like three weeks at the time. It was, it was pretty new. Um, and I said, gosh, it's such a bummer. I thought that I was going into a job interview and she's looking for someone to take over her business and that's not where I am in, in my career right now. I'm not ready for that. And Jason is like my number one cheerleader and definitely um, he believes in me in a way that I would love to eventually <laughs> get there myself. But um, he pushed me. He's like, no, this is what you're meant to do. You are, this is this is your calling. You, you should quit your job and we'll take out a small business loan and you'll take over this business and it will be great because it's already established and you're bypassing a lot of the steps that and struggles that people have to go through as a new business owner. And um, we were young and we had never bought a business before. And so we, we did all those things. And all of a sudden we were owners of this wedding planning business. Um, and the, the quick version, if, if you want the long version, uh, we'll have to do another podcast. I on do that. want the but, long. Yeah, I was just about yeah. to say, we're going to do yeah, another we'll, podcast we'll do a side call. But the super quick version is the business that we thought we bought 10 years ago was not exactly um great. So I use this reference often where I talk about you see this piece of fruit in a fruit bowl and you go to pick it up. It's beautiful and shiny and you think this is going to taste amazing. Can't wait. And then when you put it in your mouth, it kind of crumbles or it's sour or it's just, it's gross. And um, that was basically the business that I bought 10 years ago. It was a planning business that had once had a great reputation and had kind of fallen off from there. Um, we were removed from all of the local preferred vendor lists and there were horror stories that I heard time and time again. And yeah, that was, that was 10 years ago. So I'm excited to, uh, be in a different spot. Now. I bet. I bet. And well, and what I do know is that from talking to you previously, what I do know is that you took out a small business loan to purchase this business. And so how long between when you which is always no matter how much how big a loan is, that's always a little anxiety inducing. And so when how long was it from when you purchased to when you figured out that oh my goodness, the reputation of this business I just purchased and that I'm in, you know, I'm in debt for now mm. as far as the loan is concerned, how long long was it until you learned that about the business? Oh, I would say um, from the time we signed the contract, because we kept everything quiet sure. until we signed the contract with her. And then I pretty quickly hit, I guess, hit the streets, I'll say, and started going and introducing myself as the new owner of the business. And yeah, it was pretty apparent. There's one story where I remember I didn't even make it all the way up the elevator with the venue coordinator at the venue where she was like, listen, you know, I'm happy you came over to see the space, but I just want to let you know, a Southern story is not on our preferred vendor list and probably won't be on there again based on XYZ story. And I was like, oh, dang, this is, uh, this is not good. So story after story like that. And I'm thinking, dang, I left a full-time job, a great job at a venue. And now I have this loan and I have a business that no one wants to work with. Um, so there was a lot of tears and a lot of self-reflection. Um, but at the end of the day, I will say this, that I, I wouldn't do it different. 
I mm. I really wouldn't. I am grateful for the lessons that I learned and the journey of digging out of the hole. I really am. I yeah. think I went into it thinking it would be easier going that route and it felt like it was much harder, but I I think I have more pride in in going from below the ground than starting at the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you're at the bottom, there's only one way to go. This and that's is true. Up. This yeah. is true. Yeah. So yeah. what was what was professional development and the education community like when you started your business? What what did that look like ten years ago? Oh girl, it was so different. I mean, it was so different than what is out there right now. Mm-hmm. Um, there were no there were no masterminds. Their mentorships within the wedding industry weren't really a thing. There were local monthly networking events that you could go to. And I think there may have been a few larger conferences, but I definitely did not have the money to attend anything like that um, back in 2010. And so, um, yeah, I went to those local networking events. There was there. I don't think I mean, Facebook was around, but businesses were creating accounts for like as people for their business. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I do. remember. Yeah. That's only four years after Facebook started. Yeah. Yeah. So there was no Instagram. There was no, I think Pinterest was a newborn back then. Um, but as far as networking and professional education, there wasn't much. The The networking that I dove into, that's a, another kind of crazy story. One of my very first networking events that I attended, I found myself cornered in the bathroom by a longstanding planner in my market. Um, it was basically alluding to the fact that good luck, I was going to fail and call her in six months when my business was was done. Um, so that was one of those like core memories in my business that I remember so clearly. And I see how that shaped my view of networking and community. I, I had that experience and I thought, oh, I guess this is how it is. This is, you you just put your head down, you figure things out on your own. You're, you're friendly to people, but you don't share, you don't open up. And mm. um, it, it felt like there was a scarcity mindset in the wedding industry that everyone keeps their secrets to themselves. No one talks about what they're charging. No one talks about difficult clients. And that was definitely where I started 10 years ago. Mm. Um, and I am thrilled thrilled that that has changed and evolved like the whole community over competition I am on board with it and I love it yeah so what I hear you saying is that really the local networking opportunities were the only quote professional development aside from I'm sure some long-standing conferences that you don't know what you don't know if you don't know they're around they don't you know they don't exist and so were you basically just learning as you went and trying to make a go of it from your experience working from Marriott oh totally I mean I didn't know what to charge I didn't understand the the concept of a client that was a good client and a client that might not be the right fit. I mean, my parameters for booking were, do you breathe and are you planning an event? (laughs) Yes. Great. I cannot wait to work with you. you. (laughs) Yes. Then I am the planner for you. And um, that was, that was what it was. I mean, the education was, was just not there and the community was, was missing as well. Um, and so a lot of the things that I wanted to learn, I learned I learned this the hard and the expensive way. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting even now, if we just look at, you know, comparing, perf- uh, excuse me, networking opportunities now to what you're saying, even at those local networking, you know, even I think of WIPA and kind of the day networking that they do, or even the two day networking that they do, they always have some kind of education element. So it has really evolved from just standing around having a drink, putting business cards in people's hands, which is, st- you know, of course, there's always going to be that aspect of it. But like I say, even even just the basics of networking events have they all you know incorporate some sort of educational piece because they know that the industry is so hungry for that yeah totally do yeah. you um what about you like your journey over the last 5 years from 
from then to now? Yeah. So what I have seen in the last five years in the wedding industry specifically is that five years ago, when I first got started, when we first conceptualized building Vista View events, I saw that and and uh, dissimilar to your experience. So five years ago, live events were really popular. So big conferences, workshops, and they still continue to be popular. Although what's interesting is I see people struggling to fill their live events right now. So there's even in just in four or five years, there's been an evolution there. And so for example, you know, five years ago, I always credit Creative at Heart, the conference put on by Kat Schmoyer with really helping me jumpstart my wedding industry community. It definitely helped me finalize and solidify the topic for even this podcast. I started it two months after I attended that conference. And so there was so much excitement around attending large in-person events. And like I say, in my own, you know, five years in the industry, I've really seen in-person events evolve where it is a little challenging to fill large events. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who are, you know, they're established in business, but they're not willing to drop $2,500 on conference tickets. Um, I've seen that people want more structured, smaller workshops and in-person experiences so that they can build relationships and they can actually learn and implement. So even in my own time, I feel like, you know, five years ago, conferences were just taking off. They had a really, 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 really popular, good, you know, maybe three year run, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. in the last two years, like I say, in the last maybe two to three years, you know, starting at the end of that third year, I've seen them transform and it's a little more challenging to fill conferences, especially if they're just generalized education. Yeah, I agree with that. I I don't think I've articulated that. I don't the way you described it. Yeah, it's like they had a a huge boom. Mm -hmm. And then now people are wanting more virtual education, which I think is what has led to a rise in online courses and um, masterminds and things like that that can be done from home. I agree. You know, and this and this is just my opinion. You know what else I think I've seen kind of evolve in the last 5 years is that there was definitely still a place for courses, especially like in 2016. Um so the last 4 years I guess there was there's there was courses were booming and you know group coaching programs were booming and in many ways those still are. But I also see especially as you become more established in your business, I also see us swinging the pendulum back to really desiring to work with human beings, mm-hmm. not just take a course that is digitally delivered to you and that's all you get. But I see the pendulum swinging to people really wanting accountability. They want to be in you know community even if it's virtually they want to and even sometimes i see your um what am i trying to say Meg? uh they they want to work one on one i know yes. for me now being and that's not everyone because you don't always need that but i'll just say for myself being in the industry now for 5 years and just the place i'm at in my business because of my previous career in marketing i really desire one on one time because i know there's very specific things that i need to take me to the next level and that is extremely challenging to find I can relate to that. And that would be, I don't know if I covered this on the podcast that you and I did together over business mistakes, but I did not prioritize education and bettering myself as much as I should have. I just, I just didn't. And I didn't hire my first, I hired my first business coach last year, 2019. Mm -hmm. And it was because just like you, I was craving that one-on-one direction. I knew that I I could see the bigger picture of where I wanted my business to go, but it was kind of blurry and it, it felt a little out of reach. And I found myself sitting in that. I felt paralyzed um, on how to make a decision. And so I waited, I interviewed a couple people and and I was waiting for that moment. I mean, I guess kind of the moment that I had when I met my husband and I was like, yes, this is all the people that I dated before were not the right fit, but this is the person. And, And I found that in my business coach and it was scary. It was scary to spend the amount of money that I did on her, but I, I, I am so grateful that I made that leap. And I agree. I think you need different things and people crave different things when it comes to education. And that's why it's awesome that there's a lot of options out there for them. But 
for someone like me, and I, I'm sure that there's some of your listeners that can relate to this, I see it all. I'm yeah. I'm a consumer of it. Same. And I I think, well, maybe I need that. I wanna I wanna learn more here. I wanna get better at mindset. I want to um do all these things. And then I feel a little bit stuck in who the right person is to move forward with or what the right investment is because I don't want to throw away my money. That's right. And I think, yeah, absolutely, that I have wasted so much money, not because anything was inherently bad. I believe that everything I've invested in is good, but I don't think that I was diligent in when I invested in it always, just because I am such a consumer of information. (laughs) Right. And so that was my fault, you know, and I think that I wish that at that time, I just would have had a space where I could go and ask those questions so that I could just talk it out. You know, now I'm so lucky because I have, you know, people like you, Megan, and, you know, my good friend, Lindsay Lucas, who I can just speak to like on Voxer via text and just, and just basically word vomit and just say like, this is how I'm feeling. And I have a community now where I can go and say like, this is what I'm struggling with. And now I have amazing women who can say, oh my gosh, like you don't need a generalized course. You need to go find a course on content marketing or or what have you. Um, And I'm using that example, you guys, because you know how I feel about that. Uh, And Or, you know, you don't need that. What you actually need is to uh, go hire someone or, you know what I'm saying? It's it's just, it's there's so much value in being able to have that accountability and have that community where, yes, you get resources, but also you just get a space to say, here's here's what I'm struggling with. And you can get that outside perspective so they can dig through and really find the root cause of your issue. And so that you can then go spotlight that exact information instead of doing like I did for a couple of years, which is just buy all the things, um, <laughs> which again, all great things, but I wasn't diligent enough in in really figuring out like, oh, okay, is this for me specifically as a venue owner? Is this for me specifically as a marketer, as a podcaster? You know what I mean? Yeah, I I totally get that as well. And I feel like I've had those same struggles. Yeah. So what do you think now that you know, now that you've been in business for a long time, you're a coach of other wedding professionals? What is what are you trying to learn right now? What's what do you do now when you choose education? Oh, my gosh. So I think about this a lot. And I think if I could go back to 10 years ago and have clearer goals with my business, if I had had that guidance early on, what I would change. But I now seek, I feel that I've gotten to a place where I've grown my business, I've hired members to my team, I've honed in on who my ideal client is, how to reach them, how to market them, how to, once they hire us, to care for them in such an intentional way that it creates those super fans of your business. And that to me is the key to success. Mm -hmm. But I still think, you know, the area, my greatest weakness And one, this is why I hired this business coach. My greatest weakness personally is mindset and pushing past these limiting beliefs that you can have of yourself and staying in a place of comfort because it's scary to take that leap. So I look for mindset and I look for education that is tangible takeaway. So I I get really frustrated when I do attend a conference or a summit of some sort and it feels like a little too, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but it feels a little too fluffy. Like it's just, you know, rah, rah, this is going to be great. You can do it. Like Mm. I need tangible things Mm -hmm. that I can take back and tangible in the way of mindset too, because I believe that that is a real thing. You can read a um, personal development book, but I want that book or that person or that podcast and that speaking of that that's that's one of the reasons why I love you because I I see that in you too like you crave and desire tangible actionable items that you can institute into your business and that's what you deliver in your podcast which is why so many people love it Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. I agree. I Yes, we are the same on that. What is interesting is that we are the same. And I think this is a good point to make for everyone listening because they can totally relate to this. We are 100% the same in the fact that we both want tangible, actionable information. Because at the end of the day, I don't care if it doesn't work for me. 
as long as I can have something to test. But if you're mm-hmm. just trying to motivate me, you know, that can just go one way. That can go in one ear and right out the other. I get it. Yeah. But where, we, where we're different and where I think this is important be, uh, from what you just said is you like you seek out education on mindset. And for me, I seek out education on how to find like how to get tasks done in my business because I'm very much a like a visionary big picture thinker and I really need someone to just go and do that stuff for me um, or like mine out ways to just get that kind of get stuff finished. But I don't seek out mindset education because, which is hilarious because it sounds like <laughs> I don't have any mindset issues, um, but I don't, but, or I don't, I do have mindset, but I don't seek it out because I immediately seek out like, quote, activity first. Uh, interesting. Yes. Isn't yeah. that interesting? So it's funny because we both want the same thing, but we're both looking for different things in our business. And so for, for everyone, listening with us, I think that that's important to kind of just internalize and and understand it's such a, it's such a, sorry, it's a long winded way of saying we're all running different races. You know, totally. you know, Megan and I are successful in our own rights. We have our own businesses. We both have podcasts in the wedding industry. There's so many times where we could look at each other and say, ew, I don't want to talk to you. Oh. I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like I, we are competing and, and the reality is we're just not, we're just no. not like we're all running different races. And this goes back to what you said, Megan, about how much you love and advocate for that community over competition. Thank you, Rising Tide Society. Uh, but you know what I mean? And it it just goes back to it just all fits together. I feel like we've kind of come full circle with that desire where you had that horrible experience in the bathroom. And now Mm -hmm. 10 years later as an educator and as still a wedding planner, ha to that lady, um, (laughs) we, you know, we can, we seek out different things at different times in our businesses to help us get to the next level. Yeah. I love that so much. And I also, you know, an analogy that I've come to in my mind is it's like we have a set of cards. So Kinsey, you have a set of cards that you're holding in your hand. And those are the things that are your strengths. Like those are your superpowers. And then I have a set of cards and we might have a couple of the same cards, but they're definitely not exactly the same. And then we're we're out there searching for that match. Maybe it's like a big game of go fish. <laughs> it is. Yeah, we're out there searching for that match. And then also too, you know, you can still the longer you play the game, the better, right? Like the more fun mm-hmm. that it actually is. So the more that you yeah. the match those cards, but still get a new one and still hold on to your own, uh, the longer the game lasts. And wow, we're really yeah. getting deep in this go fish. Oh my gosh. I like it. Yeah, well, I think, I, like, I I think, think it's the working. Is, yeah, I I like it. I mean, I can I can picture it. And I think it's one of those things when you get into that mindset of what um, your competition is doing and and comparing yourself. Just remember that they're a totally different person with a totally different deck of or deck. That's not a word. Um, stack and deck. You, I, I was just going to say she wants to say stack and deck at the same time, ladies <laughs> <Yeah>. and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So everyone's got their own deck, deck. of cards. And um, just know that you have your own strengths that you're working with. And that that's what I love about our relationship, Kinsey, is I love and respect you so much and want to support you in all the ways because we're not exactly the same person. We have a lot of overlap and, and we can talk for hours about things. But at the end of the day, like, man, you're a marketing genius. And I want to, I want to learn from you in that aspect. And then I'm sure there's things that hopefully I can pass on to you as well. Absolutely. There definitely is 100%. Remember offline when we tried to record this podcast the first time I said we need to well, you suggested a catch-up call, and I was like, yes, because I want to ask you these five things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, totally. Okay. So here's the, here's the thing I feel, though, about education. And I don't know, this. my opinion might not be might not be very shared, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I will um, do it. I want to talk about cost of education and professional development, because here's the thing. I am established in my business, but I'm not a millionaire. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not rolling in like high six figures of profit every year. Like, let's just be real. Right. And even still, even if I was, I don't necessarily think that, I'll use an example, I don't necessarily think dropping thousands of dollars on conference tickets for generalized education, I'm just going to say it, you guys, and I don't care. I don't think that's worth it. I think that's a waste of money. Uh, Especially, like, I think it's great to get into, get in front of your peers and all of that. But you guys have been in business for five years. And... 
there are times where I'm just like, this is stupid. Why are we do? Why why are we doing this? <laughs> especially if they're again, and this is really important. Especially if it's generalized, like even if it's sort of like the wedding pro industry, if it's so general, I don't feel like that's helpful. It's also a disservice to the live event. I think it's why live events have kind of crashed and burned in the last two years. It's because people are like, okay, I invested a few things and I love it when I'm there, but then I leave and nothing happens. Um, yeah. And so I, yeah. I truly believe that. I think people are over it and they're like, mm, I'm going to spend that money somewhere else. I I agree and I disagree. Okay. So I think that when it comes to the cost of education, I have I have invested a couple thousand dollars and gone to some of those conferences. And I think that what I've gotten out of it, I've left there's there's things that been that have been disappointing. So what's been disappointing is the after, right? You hear yes. these inspirational talks and you think, okay, this I'm motivated, I'm inspired, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna make these changes. That part is is lacking to me because there's no accountability for it. And I I need and want that accountability with business decisions that I'm making. Um, I do think that what has been positive about some of those that I've attended is that I'm seeing people, speakers and industry pros that are significantly several levels above me, mm -hmm. right? And I'm hearing the highs and lows of their business and I'm getting to speak directly to them. Whereas if I wanted to hire them as a business coach, it would probably cost me significantly more than a couple thousand dollars, I would assume, for their time one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so being able to speak with them directly, be in that environment, some of the connections that I've made and the guests that I've had on my podcast from some of those events, I, I, I'm, I'm like 50-50 on it, to be honest. So it's not something that I do a lot, but it's something that I would consider doing once every year to year and a half if my business is in a place where I can afford it because it inspires me from an event design standpoint. And then I am inspired and connected to some industry leaders several levels above me. Okay. I like what you said there. I'm going to latch on to that because that did help me uh, I, I feel like I'm on your I'm coming more to your side of like the 50 50 <laughs> because yes, I have invested in in person education where I've made incredible connections. I've gotten to like, you know, what I love is when you develop a relationship with somebody online, and then you finally get to meet them in person at a conference. Mm -hmm. I think that is super important. But what I really like what you said is that if you are in a place to invest in it in your business, and that is what I really agree with, I feel as if sometimes some like promotion and some marketing is like this event will, will take your business mm -hmm. to the next level. And yeah. in my mind, because there is no accountability, because there is no follow up, because there's such a high when you're at an event for like two or three days, and then there's just such a drag, you just back into your daily life. I don't feel like that's necessarily accurate. I, I think, agree. You know, like I, I don't, and that's not true for everyone because some people are extreme self-starters. I do consider myself a hard worker. I do consider myself a self-starter. But I don't think that necessarily investing in an extremely high dollar event right away or, you know, zero to five years in business is what will actually take your business to the next level. In my mind, this goes back to us caring about tangible activity. In my mind, I'd rather see a person like that invest, invest that amount of money over a long term opportunity mm -hmm. that would give them that accountability, uh, whether that be investing in a group, whether that be investing in, you know, a VA, uh, they, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. somebody who can like yes. take action against their business, not against it. Oh, that's business. what I'm trying to do right now. Yeah. yeah I'm trying to hire my first VA. I'm Ooh, excited about it. You yeah. guys, Megan needs her first VA. Hear that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so well, some can, sort of long-term investment. And I, I kind of want to bring up the alternative side to what you're talking about because there's the thousands of dollars that you can spend on one single conference. Yes. But then I kind of take issue with staying in f the free zone. Oh, preach. Yeah. Tell me. So there, what I love is that there's more education and there's more community and there's more support in the industry now than there was 10 years ago when I came into the industry. But 
I feel also that we're a little bit oversaturated with the free information. And this is funny saying this since both you and I have a wedding industry podcast where we're putting out great free education. (laughs) Um, But I think that when it comes to deciding where you're going to take your business, that it's hard to stay in the land of free and see impactful changes. And I'm going to reference um, your friend, Lindsay, Lindsay Lucas. I had her on Weddings for Real recently talking about like carving out a niche or niche. I'm still definitely not sure which one I should be using. Yeah, same. <laughs> Who even knows? But she referenced, I think someone else, this quote of the transformation is in the transaction. Right. And I think what she was referencing there is that unless you're putting your money, your hard earned money into growing your business in whatever capacity that is, you're not going to see intentional change because you don't have skin in the game. That's not to say, and I have listened to podcasts before. I mean, I'm a lover of, and you and I have talked about this offline, but I'm a lover of Jenna Kutcher's podcast because it it speaks to tangible, actionable information that you can hear and put into your business. And that's why I love your podcast as well. Like I'm a listener of your podcast for the same reason, but free will only get you so far in my personal opinion. What What do you think? I 100% agree with that because the free information, number one, there's a lot of it. And I think we can safely say that, as you mentioned, because we both have podcasts, not that we're ending those anytime soon, because there's absolutely a place for it. Uh, But I think that there's actually very few people, and this is not a Raz, because hello, I just said I was one of them. And that's why I look for other people to help me like take things to the finish line. There's very few human beings who will take all of the free education that they have learned and implement it. And implementation is where you see that transformation that Megan is talking about. So that that's a very rare human being. And the other thing is just simple organization. There isn't a way if it's just or the organizational structure of free information. And that's why I tell people that's, uh, that, that's why I feel like there's so much, you know, 50% of the value of my podcast course comes from having everything in one place. Yes, you could absolutely go and get all of that information for free online. Um, but good luck finding it all and then putting it all together in a step by step step structure so that you start a podcast on the right foot and not saying you can't, but it's going to take so much effort. Whereas you could just open up one thing and it is literally step one through step 20. Surprise, you have a podcast. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's it's the, that's part of the value is just organizing everything in a structural place so that you have step-by-step manual of what to do that is like that basically helps you leapfrog over your competition because if you're trying to get a podcast out in the wedding industry and you're over there spending 60 of your hours on google but your competition Mm. over here in the on the in the other house is taking a course where they just have step-by-step instruction who's going to launch their show faster right and also you know to that i think people can see substantial proof that you are you deserve to be an educator in that space like you've had a podcast you've had one for years and it's successful and you're committed to it whereas i'm in several of these um like free facebook groups and i'll see this this new planner i'll give an example like hey guys i just started my business and now you know what do i do for this client that inquired and they'll screenshot the email and they'll put it in there and they'll say like, what do I do? There will be 47 different comments and different answers to how they should handle this specific instance. And I worry because I'm like, what, how do you know what these people are saying? How do you, how do you know that they run a successful business and that they have had this actual experience and they're not just chiming chiming in with some free information and there's value in that. Like, yes, I think hearing different perspectives is important and hearing from others that have gone before you, but there's no validation that someone that says this is exactly what you should be doing step by step has the background to back it up. Does that, does that 
make sense? Yeah, that really makes sense. And and you know, what's interesting is that I, I feel the same way, especially about communities where people haven't gotten a chance to know you or you don't, you don't know the leader of that community. Because mm-hmm. also remember this, yes, definitely get other perspectives, because I think it can, regardless of where they're at, I love, I love reading the answers and stuff. I think <laughs> me it helps too. me. Yeah, it helps me kind of open up my mind, see what questions yeah. are happening in the industry and, and think differently about things. But what it comes down to for me is that the reality is that people trying to help you and they have really good intentions. Here's the thing. They don't know your market and they don't know your ideal client. And those are two right. things people have to know to be able to answer you in a, in a manner that's actually going to impact your business. Um, yeah. Which is why, again, I think having accountability in a consistent in a consistent way, having that one-on-one time, having somewhere to go, the same place to go so that people can get to know your business uh, consistently is so important. Um, and, you know, it goes back to like one-on-one work because your coach, your, you know, your coach, your mentor, they're going to get to know your business. If they're a good coach or mentor, they're going to do their own, their own research. They're going to, mm-hmm. you know, whenever I have a one-on-one client, I always research their market because I want to be able to talk, to talk intelligently about their market. Um, I, I spy on them and send them an inquiry. Um, and it's so funny. I love like <laughs> sidebar. I love when people are like, oh, I can spot someone just drumming for information from a mile away. And I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> Nobody can. There's so much, but yeah, there's so like not not me because I am like the FBI. Oh I'm my like, gosh, that's hilarious. Yes, because uh, I want to know. I think it's so important. It's so great to have somebody. I wish someone would do that for me and be like, "Hey, here's what was great. Here was Megan. All right, I'll do it for me. you. you I'm on it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on it. Um, anyway, well, so here's the thing. I I feel like you know after being in the industry, Megan, for ten years and just everything you've learned, you've interviewed hundreds of people in the industry. You've attended all of those great conferences, um, you know, when you were ready, which I think that's what we're both saying, you know, we got something out of in person education when we were ready to do it. But you also had this opportunity by by doing all of that and achieving all of that, you've had this opportunity to see where there needs to be something extra. There needs to be a, Mm -hmm. a stepping stone, there's there's something missing. What is missing? So what I believe is missing is a place, and I'm going to speak specifically to planners because that's that's what I am and that's my market, is a place for up-and-coming planners that are in that startup mode or hustle mode. So I identified that as like year zero to five. You've either just started or you're wanting to start and you're wanting to grow your business. You're feeling a little overwhelmed. Maybe you're digesting a lot of that free information and you don't know how to implement it and you have a lot of questions and you're feeling kind of alone. I believe what is missing is a space that you can go to where there. One, it's affordable because as a new business owner, that's going to be one of the bigger struggles is like, yes, of course, you might want to spend $1,200, $2,000 on going to a conference, but that's just not in the cards for you right now. Um, So what I believe is missing is a space to go to where there's content and there's support and there's education that is available on you on a continuing basis. So not just a one time thing, but something and a place where you can go and learn and grow and feel safe to ask questions and get feedback and learn from others that is that is attainable and sustainable for the long term. Yes. And what I like what you said about that is number one, long term, number one, sustainable. And this is I think this is the point I was trying to make. And you did it so much better. Uh, This is the point I was trying to make about really, really high dollar uh, education, because I believe in it. You guys, I'm in a I'm in a course right now that I would have paid way more for. because It's (laughs) so valuable. Um, Shout out Carol Lyons to your corporate course. Like it's seriously so damn valuable because it's for one thing. (laughs) Just like Megan, what you have created is for one thing, not one thing, but it's for wedding planners, right? Yeah. That is so important. So tell me more. This is called the planner's fault. Yes. 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 Um, So the planner's fault, this started because um, I've been mentoring and consulting with vendors for the last two years, helping them one-on-one and growing their business. And I kept hearing the same pain points coming up, the same questions, the same fears, the same speed bumps, all super similar. But yes, I was diving into each of their businesses and I thought like this, 
this must be larger than these group of people that I'm working with. And how can I streamline this message and be able to reach a larger group of people while still collaborating with some of the people that I respect so much within the industry? And you are totally one of those people. So a little bit about what I'm doing is the Planner's Vault is going to be a membership site for up and coming planners, again, targeted that year zero to five. And inside the vault will be articles and videos and templates and important documents. There will be a private Facebook group. There will be guest webinars with industry experts. And you're going to be one of those people that will be a recurring face within the planner's vault. And I'm so excited for that. Yes, I am. Um, I have a recurring guest role, you guys, in this TV show. I love it. (laughs) I love it so much. And yeah, Kinsey, the goal is that it's it's something that, like I said, is attainable and sustainable for the long term. It's not meant to replace going to in-person events. It's not meant to replace some of the awesome courses that are out there that I have purchased myself or that are put together by some other really great industry experts. But this the people listening to this are going to know that it's for them. Like I I know that in the way that I've put the content out there and the way that I've structured it. And basically, yeah, it's 10 years of education and mistakes made and lessons learned and advice that I've put into this membership site. And it's going to be really um, affordable to start with. So we launch on the 27th of February. So depending on when you're listening to this, we may already be live. Um, but if you are if you are listening and it's not yet the 27th, we're doing a webinar that will explain everything about what the vault will include and we'll give a lot more information. And we are going to have special launch pricing that will be valid uh, right after launch and then it will increase from there. But Honestly, at the end of the day, my goal still is that I want for it to always be affordable for those that are just starting out in business that are looking for a resource and that is within reach. That, that is that is my mission. Yes, please. I agree with you when you were saying that the people, the wedding planners listening who are zero to five years in business, they are going to know if this is for them. And the I, I still didn't make this point, but the point that I wanted to make, and this is what about earlier about higher end education, is that I don't feel like the stage of your business should be the only judge of whether or not you get great education. Mm-hmm. That's that's yes. what I meant. I meant that you shouldn't have to have thousands and thousands of dollars to invest in, in high end stuff in order to get amazing education. And this is what I think this is the hole that you have filled, Megan. Uh, this is the exact gap you have filled. This is high quality for wedding planners, zero to five years in business. They can learn from someone with over a decade of experience in the wedding industry. They don't have to, you know, invest right now. This is dumb. you guys, when you get further along in your business, definitely do this. But right now, if you're not in a position to invest, you know, multiple thousands of dollars into a one on one coach, they can have some some semblance of that in this planner's vault that you've created. You know what I mean? Like there, I feel like this has, like I say, I I just don't think that you should, it's required that you have to have a certain amount of money to invest in high quality education because we've all been there. We all started at nothing. We all started at zero. We were Mm. crying in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) I was like, I don't know what to do. Uh, I just have a blank pad. Is a venue going to go here? I don't know. (laughs) You know, and it's, it's, we all deserve it. As long as we are committed, there has to be a space for us, no matter where we are in business, Megan. And and I am just so proud that you've created Mm. something like this. Thank you. I, um, I've said this before, but I did not get into weddings because I've always loved weddings. I got into weddings because I love connecting with people and I cannot describe how excited I am to be able to connect with planners. I mean, I've been there. Like I've I've been in their exact shoes and I've been through those struggles and I've I really want to be able to instill confidence and be a a guide and have support for these planners because there's a lot of them out there that are are just really struggling to figure out what the next step is and um, I want to be that next step for them and then as they continue to grow their business and they get to that next step above that 
there's some other great people that I want to connect them with for further education. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's such, that's, it's so valuable when you just know where to go to get that information, you know, coming into, I'm so happy to partner with you on this because I know my role will be in helping planners who are in that zero to five years, helping them understand what kind of marketing strategy can really impact their business because that is confusing. And I know that the other experts inside the vault will help them understand a different step in their business. And then collectively, when they're ready, we can all help them leave the nest and move on to that (laughs) next strategy, that next, you know, whether it be a course or one-on-one coaching or what have you, we can help them leave the nest and move on to what then their business needs at that time. 100%. And you know what? I'm really thrilled because you and I have been joking for several months now. We're like, we have to find a way to work together. We have to find, like, we we have such a connection and this is it. So I'm excited that we'll get to um, partner on some education within the vault. And if you're listening to this as a um, industry educator, feel free to reach out to me. I am going to be seeking out some top-notch people to come in in the form of webinars and provide education to these planners. And if you are one of the planners that might be a good fit for this, please come check us out. You will find more information at theplannersvault.com. And Kinsey, um, you'll have this, I'm sure, when you do your record at the top of the episode, but there will be a special code and special link just for She Creates Business listeners um, that We would love to have you come and join us. We would love it. And yes, there will be a special code and a special link. And full disclosure, I've mentioned it a few times. I'm a partner with Megan on this. It is an affiliate link. I will be compensated if you join the Planner's Vault through my link. But the cool news is I'm going to have something special for everybody who joins through my link. And even more cool news. This is regardless if you join through my link or not, but because I'm a partner with Megan, if you choose to join at her annual level, you're going to get the She Creates Business content calendar for free. (gasps) Amazing. Uh, Oh my God. The value in the annual membership is just, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. That's not even, that's not the only bonus, you guys. Uh, That's just one of them. So we'll, I'll give you more information. Shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm at She Creates Business. Of course, all of the information can be found in the show notes and on the blog post. Find Megan at theplannersvault.com. But remember, if you use the affiliate link, which will be the one in the show notes and the one at the top of the show, you're going to get something extra for me that no one else will. Yes. Gosh, I love love cool stuff. Megan, where can everybody find you besides theplannersvault.com? Of course. Yes. So you'll find me on Instagram at uh, our podcast, which is at Weddings for Real. And then my planning company is a Southern Story. And I would love to have you all come say hello. Megan, thank you so much for being here. I'll put all of her contact deal, t- details, details, I can't talk, her DAC. <laughs> DAC. I'm going to put her contact <laughs> DAC in the, in the show notes. Uh, hopefully you guys are, didn't forget about that joke. Otherwise, this sounds weird. Uh, Megan, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I adore you. I'm so happy to be a partner on this and we're going to crush it. Yeah, so thankful for your friendship and support. You're the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.